God has been convicting me about scrolling through Facebook endlessly in the evening, watching cat and dog videos and, you know, whatever else pops up. On my news feed, it's mostly bridal videos because obviously it, it, it works with your algorithm and what you've been looking at before. I love, you know those shows where they, they say yes to the dress and they choose their dresses? I love those shows. But I could watch them and two, three hours could go by like that. And I don't think that's how God wants me to use my time. Is it okay to rest? Yes. Is it not okay to waste time? Yeah, it's not okay. All right, so sorry if there's some people getting uncomfortable in here, but Facebook. You, do you know that when they created Facebook, they hired psychologists that were involved in the creation of um, gambling games? So you know how you do the scroll thing? Is that familiar to anybody? Exactly. It's like the pokies. It's the same thing. So your brain is looking for a reward. Oh, where's an interesting, where's a cute cat video? You know, where's a cat dressed as a pirate or whatever it is. So you, you keep scrolling, you keep scrolling, looking for that hit. Psychologically, that's what's going on. Because when you find that cat video, or when you find that video of your cousin's brand new baby boy, it gives you a hit of endorphins. And then you need the next hit and you keep going. So I, I really believe, now I'm not gonna say here, stand here and say Facebook is of the devil. You need to shut down your Facebook account. But the enemy can use things, right? Yeah. And I think it'd be pretty plausible to say that he could be using Facebook mm. to waste our time and to keep us from being as effective as we could be for the kingdom of God. Okay. So we talked about how Jesus, Jesus set limits. I love looking at how Jesus interacted with people because Jesus was the master of boundaries. He really was. Um, if you're not sure about boundaries, one of the ways you know that your boundaries are being violated is if you feel resentful a lot of the time. Okay. If you feel like other people and tasks are managing your time and making decisions for you and you feel resentful because of that. That's one of the ways that you know that your boundaries are being violated. Um, a good book to read on this, if you're challenged in that area, um, is Cloud and Townsend. Dr. Cloud and Townsend have written a book called Boundaries. I recommend every Christian reads it. Because unfortunately what happens is, a lot of the time we become Christians, we become nice and we go, oh, I don't need boundaries anymore. I'm just gonna be so nice and everybody can run my time and they can, they can call me any time of night and day, right? Okay. But that's, it doesn't have to be that way. Jesus wasn't that way. Jesus was still in a, a body of flesh. He would have burned himself out if he had operated that way, but he didn't. You know, the interesting thing is, um, one of the challenges with boundaries as well, another way you can know if your boundaries are being violated is if you tend to be reactive all the time. So there's a difference between responding, and I don't have time to get into this, but there's a difference between responding and reacting. If you're finding that you're continually reacting to situations, that could mean that your boundaries are being violated. Remember how the Pharisees came to Jesus and they said, oh, who should we pay taxes to? Jesus could have reacted in fear, because fear is one of the major things that will make you react. He could have reacted in fear and said, oh, who, who do you think that we should pay taxes to? But he didn't. He grabbed a coin and he said, whose face is on this? So he put the ball back in their court. So when people are trying to trespass your boundaries, you can take a leaf out of Jesus' book and put the ball back in their court. Allow others to take responsibility. Never take responsibility for others where they should be taking responsibility. That will rob you of your peace. And you know what? If you don't have peace, that leads to burnout. Everything should be done from a place of peace. Do you know that the, um, the reservoir that you have inside of the, you that you're able to produce from, it's not energy, it's actually peace. Peace produces energy, which enables you to do stuff. 
don't have peace, you won't have energy. You won't have the output. Does that make sense? We need peace. Peace is the reservoir, not energy. Energy comes out of the peace. Number three, don't forget that you are flesh and blood. Look after your body. Amen. Care for your body. Okay, if you, if you struggle like me with um, popping sugar in your mouth every time you get stressed, yeah, anybody up, just me, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you for those hands. I didn't ask for them, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Stop it. You know, ask God to help you. Maybe it's a sugar addiction. Maybe you need to actually pray and fast and, and break that. You know, and those are some of the things that I'm looking at doing. But be, um, use metacognition. So metacognition is thinking about what you're thinking about. So stop and think why am i putting this in my mouth why am i reaching for a chocolate bar every time i'm um, trying to get my work finished or meet a deadline for work or whatever it is okay so think about what you're thinking about it's interesting that in times of intense activity for jesus what do we find him doing resting what was he doing in the boat? Resting. Sleeping, resting. He had a tough day. And uh, there's this book that I love. It's by Wayne Cordero. So it's by our pastor of New Hope in Hawaii. And some of you may have read this, some of you may not. I recommend that every person in ministry and even every Christian reads this book because it will prevent you from crashing and burning. It's called Leaving on Empty. Okay, so he, he talks about a lot of this stuff that we're talking about today. Um, but one of the things that he says is when you go through times of intense activity, it's important to put in as much, um, as many activities that recharge you to replenish that time that you're giving out. So the harder, the more intense time you're going through, the harder you should be resting, the harder you should be relaxing. Does that make sense? You've got to put in what you're giving out. Um, there's just there's some very very basic things to take care of our health. I'm just going to go through these really quickly um, Drink water What is Jesus called the the what of life? Water of life water gives life. Do you know that it reduces stress? It helps flush away the toxins in your body that build up when we're stressed So make sure that you drink enough water and all of these things. They're not unspiritual In fact, you're gonna have greater longevity in your ministry You're gonna be more effective for God if you do these things and I know that pastor Matt is big on exercise mm -hmm. Yep, so this is being modeled by our pastors as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can follow their example So 80% of your brain tissue is water if you're only drinking one or two cups of water a day, what's gonna happen? your brain's basically going to be dehydrated and you're not going to be able to think properly so if you feel like you have a foggy brain a lot of the day drink more water maybe it will make a difference um regular sleep patterns like i said jesus made sure and <laughs> pastor matt's got his water bottle oh, yeah. that's great <laughs> make sure you get regular sleep okay even though maybe jesus was out praying on the mountain he did find that time for sleep in the boat he did make that a priority okay so uh, they say, they being the scientific powers that be, um, they say that the sleep between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is where you get your deepest sleep. So, and 10 p.m. is the optimum time to go to sleep and 6 a.m. is the optimum time to wake up. That's when we really get recharged. So if you're regularly going to bed at 1 a.m., it's gonna deplete your system. I want you to do me a favor, close your eyes for a moment. Everybody, everyone in the room, close your eyes. Okay, put your hand up if you've ever had trouble sleeping, like it's been an ongoing thing where it's been a struggle. Okay, put your hand down. Okay, you can open your eyes. Okay, would it surprise you if I told you that probably just a little over half the people in this building put their hands up? Sleep, um, sleep issues are a big one and it's happening more as the enemy is just unleashing this fear on earth. 
is bringing anxiety and fear and it's robbing people of their sleep. Mm. Can I give you a tip for the number one thing that I have found that conquers um, sleep issues? Get some headphones, plug them in and listen to the audio Bible. That will help you get to sleep. Turn it down so it's like you can just hear it. And you know what? I have had some supernatural experiences doing that. I have woken up in the middle of the night and God has spoken to me or he's been speaking to me in my sleep. You absorb the word. Your spirit absorbs it as you're sleeping. So if you have trouble sleeping, um, that's a, a good one to try. Okay. What number are we on? Number four. Okay. Read the word, worship, and stay focused on the kingdom. And I remember that um, one of the pastors that came to visit us, about Pastor Matt would remember who it was, somebody said, what you focus on, you magnify. Mm. And that's so true. What you focus on, you will magnify. If you're focusing on coronavirus, you will magnify in your heart and in your mind, in your life. If you're focusing on politics, you will magnify it in your life. And whatever you magnify becomes a dominant influence in your life. The peace of God is no longer driving you. Also, when we don't have peace, we're more likely to sin. Okay, so that's when we're more vulnerable. That's when the enemy is going to come in and say, hey, just have a look at this on your computer. It, it'll make you feel better. Or maybe you should watch this, this movie. You know, you wouldn't usually, but go ahead you know you've had a really stressful week okay or it could be in other areas but the enemy is very quick to pick up when we are tired and vulnerable when did he visit jesus in the desert was it at the beginning of the fast no it was when he was well into it he he waited and he took his opportunity um so that's why it's important to do these things like resting and you know the solution to not sinning is not to try harder that rarely fails because all that does is that makes us focus on the sin more and we magnify the sin. It becomes bigger and bigger until it's like, ah, oh, I can't overcome this thing. It's so big. But God gives us the solution. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. If you redirect your energy to the things of God, that's going to, you're going to stop focusing on, I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to sin. I'm going to sin. If you say that, what's going to happen? You're going to sin. You're going to do it. Okay, so redirect your energy to the things of God. Okay, number six. Number five. 